There we are. We are officially live. Uh, hopefully somebody in the thread will let us know if it's coming across. Uh, we, no, it's just us two for the moment. Bill, tell us what you've been up to this week while I uh, put the link in. I've been uh, thinking this morning about starting up a, a 2017 guide to SEO for beginners. Because I've been getting questions from people like, what is PageRank? And <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 does, what does Google use as an authority uh, signal? How does PageRank fit into that? So people are uh, forgetting what these things were for. Yeah, I, I guess it's always the thing, isn't it? When something's been around for a while, there's a lot of things that we all take for granted and therefore don't repeat all the time. So the people who are coming in in the last two years haven't heard a lot of things that we got bored of saying 10 years ago. Right. <laughs> um, which is why, you know, back in the forums, we never got tired of answering those basic questions again and again because for somebody, it's always the start. What are you watching, Terry? You do know we're on air, right? Pardon me? You know we're on, yeah? You Never are. on? We're live. Oh. <laughs> no, I did not know that. <laughs> I guess I'm a little late today, aren't I? Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Terry, what have you been up to this week? Not paying attention, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I meant specifically this week. Uh, this week, I did something real neat. I uh, finally got rid of, uh, I changed one SEO plugin for another. Uh, and it had an import export, so I didn't have to go back and redo the descriptions and cool. all that stuff. So, go on, I drop the name. Which, which one have you switched to? I switched from Yoast to uh, All-in-One, which had an importer. I've used All-in-One, another, the other SEOs, they changed to Yoast, and I just found too many things that I didn't like. So I was willing to take the chance that I might have to redo all the descriptions. Uh, I was that annoyed by it. So, yeah, I'm not a fan. Cool. Uh, one of your fans is in, though. Uh, this is this is about you, uh, Terry. Uh, Doc's been flirting with you for ages now. You know, I, I just thought we had to let people know about it. <laughs> uh, hopefully, Christine will be somewhere in the background now. Can we hear you yet, Christine? No? No, okay. yeah. Not yet. We'll, we'll give it time. Uh, this week for me, oh, it's always the same, isn't it? Those last minute bits and pieces before Christmas and then uh, trip to the doctors and yeah, the, the, the average sort of stuff. Nothing exciting. Uh, <laughs> uh, Doc claims he's being misquoted. I have no idea what he means there. <laughs> Uh, thanks everyone for letting us know the stream's okay. Uh, the link is in the stream, so if anybody wants to jump in, uh, feel free. If anybody's on YouTube watching, there is a link to jump in on the G Plus page, which should be linked to in the description under the video. Uh, well, we've kind of had some interesting stuff amongst the obligatory 2016 round out posts you know you always get at the end of every year what happened this year like we weren't there to see it and uh then you know january of course we can look forward to all the what's new in 2017 that supposedly wasn't new in 2016 2015 blah, blah, blah. i did get asked to do one um and normally for for danny goodwin i will you know make the effort and, and write something but he asked me you know to do one about what's new in 2017 and do you know what the advice I gave last year is still the best advice for this year um, 
you know, focus on brand, focus on authority. Um, don't play the short game. There, there wasn't really anything I could add that was specific. Yeah, so, but you probably would have said that in, you know, 1999. <laughs> I always try and find something that, that's different. You know, when semantics came in, I pointed out that this had made that more important. Um, I'm not seeing anything that I think has changed the game for us dramatically. Most of the tweaks to Google I've seen recently have been tweaks to Google. They're at Google's end. There's nothing you can do at your end. It's like rank brain. There's no way to optimize for rank brain. This is just Google getting better. But, but more and more, that's what our job's going to come to. We won't be able to manipulate. We'll only be able to accentuate. I think you'll always be able to do the things that you know Google rewards. It's just that less and less will those things be obscure little KPIs. And more and more, they will be actual quality signals. But you'll still be able to focus on the quality signals that Google can most easily measure, as opposed to things you could do that you know Google really can't or doesn't care about. Um, does it really make a difference which browser your site actually looks best in? As long as the code is clean and it renders in all browsers, does Google care that much about how good it looks in one browser over another? No. So if you're optimizing, you wouldn't waste a week on just tweaking it so it looks perfect in every single one as long as it's something you're happy with and your customers are happy with, right? You optimize where you spend your time. What about you, Bill? No, I'm not too worried about cross-browser compatibility on most of the pages I work with. Uh, so long as the site's mobile-friendly, that's often sufficient. Yeah. Uh, apparently, people can't see the link to the stream. Uh, when I asked how the stream was, right below that is the link to jump in. <laughs> <laughs> so there's right, definitely there's some errors with that link because it took me like eight tries. It kept throwing an error at me, saying oh, I wasn't that's able Google. to join. That's Google. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, I've I've redone it, so it, it's there. Uh... Hi, Jane. How are you? What have you been up to this week? Um, Christmas shopping. <laughs> All the last minute stuff that I couldn't order on Amazon. Um, I wrote an interesting article on the whole Google News fiasco thing that's going on about like the Holocaust and all the fake news that's going on. Um, other than that, it's been same old, same old. Cool. It, that's kind of what I was saying. Um, it, it does feel like at the moment things are same old, same old. Uh, just letting people know that, yeah, we, oh, hang on, that's the wrong link that's why <sighs> yeah I'll get it it's because I was setting up the comment tracker afterwards I forgot I had copy pasted something else my bad there we go the correct link is now there <laughs> <laughs> that explains it but I know I put the correct link in the post that I shared for you guys earlier because I did that before I'd set up comment track or indeed anything else. <sighs> Christmas. It's already frying my brain. I'll have my big mug of Nicaraguan coffee. That will do me. I have a big mug of eggnog latte. <laughs> eggnog latte. You hipster, you. <laughs> Hey, I was drinking lattes well before it ever became like the thing to do. Yeah, lattes, yes. When it gets to be chai latte and eggnog latte. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's holidays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that that's the definition. That's that's where it gets in the apes to do it. A little bit you? later in the day I'd put rum in it or something exciting. Yes. <laughs> yes. Hey Doc, how are you? 
I'm not hearing you. Your mic's not picking up at the moment. Uh, yeah, Zao is, is uh, either exclaiming in joy or uh, possibly disbelief. <laughs> I know with, with me, it would be disbelief. Ain't no glad, eh? Yeah. <laughs> it's good. You can only have it for like a month, if that. Yeah, that sounds like a month's too long. <laughs> Eggnog's quite nice. Latte, very nice. Mixing the two, I'm not sure. You should try it. It's seriously very tasty. Okay. I, I will I will take you at your words. <laughs> <laughs> so let's let's do a quick round up. We, we kind of all know what a US Christmas is like. You you've already had it all at Thanksgiving. Uh, yeah, you know, Christmas is a, is a bit quieter, isn't it, Bill? Then thank you. It it seems like you know most people the big get together feast and all the rest of it is Christmas. It's uh, Thanksgiving, and then Christmas is uh, pop round and, and share a present. We've had different traditions set up uh, in my family. We visit different people, different. Uh, holidays. So with Christmas, we we've been visiting my uh, brother's sister's family for past forty some years. Cool. And usually have about a hundred or so people showing up at her house, which is wow. kind of fun. Get to see a lot of people. Is is it a particularly large house, or is it just very very cramped? <laughs> it's very, very cramped. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know how that goes. We've got two dozen coming in to spend a couple of weeks with us. It's going to be a household. Cool. Jen, what about you? What's your, Chris, your Christmas plans like? It kind of depends what's happening. Like last year, we went to Disneyland. That was pretty awesome. We were there for. Uh, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, and Boxing Day, and that was pretty good. Other than that, it kind of depends. And I think your traditions of Christmas, a lot of it will depend on if you have little kids and if they believe in Santa Claus or not. Because if it's the whole Santa, then you have, you know, cookies for Santa, you have the stockings, you have, oh, what did Santa bring me? And all that as well. Yeah, I remember doing uh, the thing when, when mine were young enough of... Uh getting the spray snow and carefully going <laughs> around my boots to leave snowy footprints and because you know didn't have a white christmas but santa had come from the north pole so there was still snow on his boots uh, yeah i remember my mom one year went out and actually put little raisins outside for reindeer poop <laughs> when my daughter was really little and she like <laughs> bought it hook line and stinker when she was that little yeah but can't now eat anything with raisins in <laughs> Terry, he actually yeah, doesn't yeah. like raisins. That's kind of an interesting thing. <laughs> yeah, they look just like reindeer poop. <laughs> Terry, what's your Christmas plans? I go down to Hamilton, see my parents. They live with my sister. Get together with them. Cool. Just for the day. Used to go down and visit for a week or so, but everyone's uh, downsized because all the kids have grown up and moved up to the houses so. yeah yeah i think ours is a, a quiet one this year just uh, us and the kids really we're, we're visiting the rest of the family we got a christmas brunch this year <laughs> uh, which had better involve bucks fizz because that that's kind of become a tradition um Certainly around the south of England, a Bucks Fizz morning breakfast for uh, Christmas is a thing I've seen in many places. You know, the old orange juice and champagne breakfast. Hey, Dawn. Somebody's in a Christmas jumper already. <coughs> and healthy. <laughs> Yeah, we'll, we'll give her a chance to get sorted out at the moment. She's kind of uh, not quite all there. I, I got my uh, annual gift from uh, Jim Boykin's Merrily Band today. 
I must admit, they, they do send me a, a, a card uh, every year. Yeah, that was signed by all the ninjas team. Um, I, uh, amongst the, the things this year, uh, some very silly things, but you know, I like very silly things. That's why I'm an SEO. <laughs> Yeah, I know that'd be your level, Terry. <laughs> I'm trying to work out what I can now convert it to do. You know, what what I can fix to to its arms to make that motion mean something. Uh, I must admit, you know, they they do give me the. I know they're little promotional gifts. Um, who knows what the hell this is? I, I really don't. If anyone knows what this is, it's a mystery to me. Uh, but the pen, I can work the pen, and that's going to be useful. <laughs> uh, it, it does seem there's a lot of swag around at Christmas. I know um, SEM Rush were giving away some, some lovely things to some of their friends this year. Uh, and yes, yes it does, Zara. Yes, silly is always good, especially this time of year. Have any of you had any silly gifts this year? Any weird swag bags, anything like that? I got some rush cookies. <laughs> there you go. SEM rush cookies here. Not yet. Yeah. Yeah. What about the uh, obligatory bottle of scotch? Surely somebody sent you a bottle of scotch or equivalent, Doc. Not yet, but I'm keeping an eye on the mailbox. You never know. I might get lucky. <laughs> You've got the wrong clients, mate. If you haven't had them by now. <laughs> I did get wine. <laughs> yes. Excellent. That counts. Definitely. Mm. I still don't think Chris is there. I don't know if Dawn's there. Uh, Doc, what have you been up to this past week? Uh, this week I've been working on a new project. Uh, just started this last week and kind of getting things cranked up, setting up a new campaign, trying to work in with, with one of my colleagues who's very versed in integrating the PPC with the organic, because I don't touch the page stuff myself. I always bring bring someone in to work with me on that. And he's really good at integrating the two, so it's going to be an interesting exercise. It should be educational for me. In, in spite of my resistance, I guess I'm destined to learn something about PPC. Definitely, and you should. You should embrace it, Doc. It is such a useful tool. Um, in an overall SEO campaign, there are so many times when it does things that you really wish SEO could do. Um, yeah, no, I, I understand that. And, you know, I, I certainly agree that it, it definitely is valuable. It's just it's something that I've never wanted to get involved in. I'd rather bring somebody in to work with me on it. Yeah, yeah. But... Uh, uh, I didn't want to learn to ride a bike either, you know, and I, I got over that. So. <laughs> there are Do wheels was under five feet tall, Doc. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't, don't mention being under five feet tall. Kristen's not here to defend herself yet. <laughs> She'll be even a little while. Hopefully. Uh, I noticed, Bill, you know, a lot of uh, Google stuff recently about AI, about the use of AI. I mean, it's still a thing that is fascinating to people, the amount of articles I see about it. Of course, most of them woefully inaccurate, but it does seem to be a thing that still fascinates people, doesn't it? It does. There's, there's a lot of stuff going on. It's been going on for a couple of years. And... Uh, We've only gotten hints of some of the things that are happening and some really obscure papers and patents that uh, don't tell us too much if we don't think about them too much. Yeah. And I mean, this is, this is one of the things. I mean, we've both been very interested in uh, following Jeff Dean um, for a long time. And a lot of this is if not his baby, then he's so closely involved. Um, 
and yet there's still yeah i mean I, I, even now we do not know everything that google is using ai for because i think on a daily basis they're almost thinking up new ways uh, to use this <laughs> this ability they've got they supposedly have over a thousand projects in place in motion at google right now that use ai and they're uh educating everybody who works there in some aspect of ai if they want to learn it and they're getting people to want to learn it. Yeah, yeah. And it, it, it's the new fad, and I think we're going to have about 10 years of, of people really going on and on about it. Um, but even these monumental leaps, sometimes, you know, they don't, they don't make that much difference in it's, the obvious way for the the average it's a bit like you know space travel when when we were kids you know the the apollo missions were you know earth earth shaking stuff everyone talked about these things yeah. uh by now we we're all supposed to be you know living on the moon and mars and goodness knows where um the closest we had was a movie about matt damon being there in a crash <laughs> i mean well, that was an awesome movie well, Amit Singhal did like to talk about wanting the uh, uh, Star Trek computer that you talked to to become a reality at Google. But he wasn't a fan of AI, supposedly. And the guy who's now the head of uh, search at Google, John Galandrio, he was a chief technical officer at MetaWeb that Google uh, merged with in 2011. Uh, he's, he was the head of AI at Google while Amit Singhal was still the head of search. And he's, he's incorporated a lot of AI type stuff into what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for the average person though, there isn't that much difference between programming and AI. Um, you know, it, it's all, oh, it does technical stuff and it's got very complex calculations. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, it's just whether it worked out its own formula, its own algorithm, or whether it, it machine learned it. You know, the, the difference in the end result sometimes isn't that obvious. It's only the speed at which you get there that, that's supposed to change. Mm -hmm. If it's a, a type of AI that requires supervision, that means human beings have to tell the computer everything about everything we're looking at. Yeah. If it's unsupervised AI, that's where the machine learning comes in. Because at that point, it's supposed to be able to watch lots of videos on, say, YouTube and be able to automatically come up with a picture of a cat and say, yes. this is a cat. It meows. It does this. Yep. You know, I, I've just found some stuff. I was going to say, I've just found, you know, I'm doing my uh, res dissertation research at the moment, digging around. I just found um, a really interesting paper, actually. Do you remember we talked about the dust buster? You know, you do not crawl in the dust, yeah? Yeah. yeah. So I, I went on and started rooting around more and more papers in that area. And I started to find some papers that talk about um, a semi- uh, unsupervised and supervised combination of dust discovery yeah so that implies a kind of half AI um, system that's going on um, with particularly with crawling so yeah like, there's lots of potential tagging going on for instance exactly. yeah exactly yeah. and flagging of things and uh, yeah. pattern, pattern discovery there's, there's this um, particular one that looks at, you know, the, uh, the, the recent Monica, Monica Hensinger and William Pugh paper from 2016. Yeah. That looks at ways in which you, they can recognise patterns. They build these, instead of having just one or two fingerprints, they have about six different fingerprints of duplicate content, for instance. Mm -hmm. And they, they sort of feed that all in and compare any random uh, combination. So there's quite a lot of stuff out there at the minute that I'm reading about. Um, 
semi supervised and unsupervised. So, yeah. I saw a really interesting article about a week ago about, uh, I can't remember now who the organization was, but they had two separate computer systems set up for AI. And the two systems started talking to each other and developed their own encryption module. Yeah, and I the saw owner, that. And the operators can't break it. Mm. Next week, they're taking over the world. There yeah. you go. There goes our hopes of flying cars, folks. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is amazing, you know, that you, you've got to say, I mean, I noticed, Bill, you, you mentioned the thing about learning cats. Kristen broke Ooh. that because she was wearing those kitty ears for weeks. <laughs> completely broke Google. It cannot now recognize Kristen as anything but a cat. An opportunity <laughs> missed, eh? <laughs> uh, the right. semi-supervised and unsupervised learning thing, one of the ways that we see that is you let the algorithm run for a certain time, but it uh, accepts human input on preference. It's a bit like when it generates lots of different images and then you say which one you like, and then it, it extrapolates based on that more. Uh, we get this in computer-aided design um, with some of the programs there where it can automatically create its own designs and then you kind of tweak it by selecting which you prefer out of a given load of options at, at any given time. In a few weeks ago, Google, uh, there was news in Wired magazine about Google coming up with a sentence compression algorithm. And that means they've learned how to paraphrase stuff they read online. So they're taking uh, news stories and coming up with questions based on those stories and paraphrasing answers based on the articles about the stories, uh, which is how we get featured snippets. It's one approach. So yeah. sentence compression means Google's learned how to par paraphrase, which doesn't sound like that difficult thing, but Oh, it, it's incredibly it's difficult. Sometimes. Yeah. Let, let's face it, one of the things we complain about the most is how many people read an article or hear about an update at Google and then paraphrase it down to a point where it no longer makes sense. They oversimplify it. Um, was, you know, I was always a fan of that thing. Make anything as simple as possible and not one bit simpler. Um, oversimplification is a big, big sin, and it's very easy to do. It it does make me worry at times that, you know, you'd want something to paraphrase. Um, that usually is a sign of laziness, which is fine. You know, I'm all for laziness, but it's not necessarily a good thing. Google shouldn't need to paraphrase. How fast can it bloody read? <laughs> They've got access all the websites in the world. They are at least the ones that aren't blocked. Yeah. Them. Yeah. Exactly. So it's kind of the building an algorithm to dumb it down for us and isn't the ultimate game of a game of something like AI that it should be uplifting us rather than sinking down to our level because you know we shouldn't be the pets of our robot overlords or their masters. When you hear that DeepMind is crawling the Daily Mail to learn about the world. <laughs> oh, that's scary. Oh, that is worrying. It could be worse. It could be the National Enquirer and it's already found Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, could, it, could be, uh, it could be the Guardian which is, or the Express. That could be worse. Uh, I, I did read a wonderful uh, thing this, this week. Uh, about one of these Elvis conspiracy theories that he was in Home Alone. Uh, and it, it had this long, long list of, of the connections and uh, it was done tongue in cheek, but it, it was fantastic. Uh, there are conspiracy theories that I do find fun. And then there are conspiracy theories that I find very dark and dangerous. And one of those has certainly come up this week. Yeah. Um, you'll all remember that uh, around about the time of the fake news scandals was also this big concern about Google having lots of searches for was the Holocaust real 
is the Holocaust real? Is the Holocaust a fake? And the number one ranked site was a Nazi uh, site that was Holocaust denial. And, you know, I mean, that kind of stuff is exceptionally dangerous and exceptionally stupid. I mean, I'm, I'm one of these people, I, I do honestly think that anyone who even searches for Holocaust denial should, you know, and not looking to laugh at the people. Anyone wanting to actually know if the Holocaust was real probably is of diminished responsibility and needs to be put into care. Uh, I've met a couple of people with Auschwitz tattoos. People do not fake that shit. I went and I, because I did wrote an article on this and I really dug down into it and researched it. And one of the things was hardly anyone was actually searching for it. I think it was like 120 monthly searches, but it also takes into account obviously stuff that has that keywords in it. Um, so there wasn't like, it wasn't like thousands and thousands and thousands of people were searching for it each month. It was like one of those weird random uh, things that people were searching for, for whatever reason. And there's no way to know what the intent was of the searcher anyway when they were searching it. Were they searching because they believed it? Were they searching it because they were doing a paper on it? There was no context behind, behind the searches. One would but, hope that they were searching it because they couldn't believe that anybody actually thought that way. Well, I mean, there's lots of times that we search for stuff, like we see someone posting it on Facebook or whatever, and we're like, no way, and we'll go and do random searches. Uh, maybe not call a cost specific, but um, it's kind of an interesting thing about what should Google do. I saw they've now made a change to the algorithm to kind of try to combat some of these fake stories and fake news sites from popping up in the search results for sensitive types of queries. Um, it would be interesting to see how well it actually works in practice as opposed to just theory. Because I mean, there's there's tons of stuff as well. There's, you know, autism and vaccine link. There's 9-11 conspiracy theories. There's all kinds of conspiracy theories out there. Um, and the other problem that I said was that a lot of people just aren't creating content targeting like no one's creating well they are now but you know last week they weren't creating content to target did the holocaust happen there's tons of great resources all about the holocaust but they weren't specifically writing stuff to debunk uh did the holocaust happen and so that's why all these you know other types of sites were popping up for the query instead yeah, yeah um, uh, come on Chrissy. Like what Sullivan said um, you said like create the content that will, that's like the best way to combat uh fake news and that was just like boom that was like a light bulb for me that's really great You're very yeah, and i can understand why people people aren't wanting to like a holocaust sites for example they're not wanting to give any kind of credence to the people that are saying no the holocaust didn't happen so i can totally understand why they're not creating content about that and they don't want to be like oh even you know this holocaust site is talking about it so i can understand both like the perspective of why they're not creating the content but as we're seeing if you do create the content you can easily outrank the people why that say it's fake do it because you can't monetize it there's no benefit from doing it other than debunking or not well i don't think any like the holocaust research sites are in it for the money <laughs> Um, but it, those sites don't rank. They rank say, for they rank for all kinds of Holocaust queries, just not specifically the ones that are saying it didn't happen. Yeah, John Doherty's site is you know That's starting cool. to get there, but it, it's still not number one for a lot of things when we're looking. Um, maybe the US algorithm is, is ahead of ours, but uh, here it's the Nazi site that was at number one. We've been sharing uh, John Doherty's site between us and, and starting to build up some more links to it. But as I said, it hasn't actually got that much content at the moment. So a few of us have been volunteering. Uh, I've still got to get in touch with John, but volunteering that if he wants some content, we'll each kind of research a, a really good article and then combine them to, to get some in-depth content up there to, to knock that off. And uh, yeah, I know it can't be monetized, uh, but that's not the only thing that matters in this world, is it? And I, I've always that's found the CEOs to be a very generous uh, and thoughtful group. I, the reason that it fascinates me is because, you know, I'm generally anti-censorship, but 
I'm also of the opinion that there are things that we do need to be very careful to educate right on. And I think anyone searching for that, regardless, is interested in an answer and therefore has doubt. Uh, you know, you, you don't search for something if you already know what you're going to find there. If you were confident that Nazi stuff wouldn't be up there, you wouldn't be searching. If you were confident that, you know, it's one of those. It's one of those. Sometimes, yeah, people are maybe just searching because they've heard that there's crap up there, but who told them there was crap up there and why? It, it gets to be a thorny issue. Well, it's a funny one because where do we draw the line, though, where, where we say, well, Google actually don't show that because, I mean, obviously the Holocaust happened. Don't get me wrong there. The point is, where do we draw the line and say, um, you know, you're not allowed to show that, you're not allowed to show that, that's not my opinion, so I don't want anybody to see it. It, it gets difficult, doesn't it, really? Yeah. yeah. It's already against yeah. terms of service, though. Um, With Google are. now, it's pretty hard to find that stuff by mistake. It's not 10 years ago where that stuff was coming up where it definitely shouldn't. Like someone who gets at those results had intent of getting those mm -hmm. results. That's a big yeah. part of it, I believe. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Somebody sent me an email today, this morning, asking how much does a post on SEO by the sea cost? <laughs> <laughs> Just thinking they don't have that much money. Yeah. But uh, tell them You're not going to show the price then, eh? Uh, when, when somebody asks something yeah. like that, you, you give them a, an answer that's kind of honest and, and also lets them know straight away where they stand. You know, my answer to something like that is 15 years. 15 years of non-stop truth-telling and care about the community. That's what it costs. To the point that John, I saw something this morning. They've introduced a bill for the Senate of the state of South Carolina. They want to, to force all computers to have integrated blocks against porn sites. Or you have to pay 20 bucks or something to, either the retailer has to pay 20 bucks. That. Yeah, they have to pay 20 bucks. Retailers have to pay 20 bucks to not install it on every individual computer. Or the computer owner can pay the government or whoever 20 bucks to get it lifted. And uh, I just... So which, which country is sure. sex illegal in? So a government has figured out how to tax porn. Basically. That, that's what they're trying to do. And, you know, that, that's a different thing. Because that would only fly in the United States. Let, let's face it, I've always thought that the pornography laws and so on were weird anyway. Um, I mean, here in, in the UK, uh, legal age of consent is 16. Um, I know that, you know, there's, there's some places you, you can you can get married younger than that in the world, but over here you can, with parents' consent, get married at, at 16. Uh, it's certainly legal to have sex at, at 16, but you can't take pictures of yourself doing it or your partner naked until you're 18. So you must presumably <laughs> spend the first two years doing it with all the lights off and a blindfold on. <laughs> There's been some cases in the U.S. where uh, teenagers have been charged because girlfriends or boyfriends share imagery with each other, and then you know they have a nasty breakup. Someone sends it to someone, and suddenly that person's being charged with child porn. Yes, and do you know what? Fair enough. Yeah, I think I would expect that to be. And ha and haven't Facebook um, introduced something around that as well? Um, there's been quite a few legal. Cases. There's been quite a few legal cases in the UK. That's actually a massive crime now. You know, actually, uh, what do they call it? Hate revenge, revenge porn. What? Revenge porn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Google will actually remove re revenge porn from the search results now. They changed that last year, maybe, so that if you have a partner that puts up uh, naked pictures of you without consent on the web, you can actually get Google to remove them. But it only removes it from the search results. It's still going to actually live on wherever it is unless you get it removed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how many people, well, I suppose it depends on if you're 
if you're famous if you're not famous you probably get away with never being seen but if you're famous it might actually get seen many times before um before it gets removed well, some people, when they're particularly nasty, they'll go and they'll create like a web page with the person's name and their phone number and like the whole nine yards to try to target future dates and future employers and stuff like that. Which, yeah. so for that, it's great that Google will remove it. And it, it's another thing of, of bad choices. Um, you know, if, if you're with somebody who would do that, um, you've probably made a bigger mistake. Um, Okay, wait, wait. I've Stop made bad deals. <laughs> thing is this fault. <laughs> no, but uh, I think you have to be careful in the first place with who you give that kind of material to, and you, you know you've you've made a choice at, at some point in time. Um, you know, I will neither confirm nor deny whether I have ever shared pictures uh, or received pictures. Uh, I, I can tell you nobody's bothered to take my picture in years. Uh, so <laughs> of any sort, never mind. I've got a picture of you, Armin, from uh, Brighton SEO. Exactly. Yeah. And I think not, that was literally like that. one of three photographs taken of me the whole year. <laughs> you know, th you know th the thing is, you say that, but people do change, you know. I, I've known people who've kind of chosen a partner and they seemed wonderful and then, you know, several years later, things change and people suddenly get these terrific personalities that have been moulded over the years that are nothing like they were in the first place. So, you know. Mental one thing. Sometimes people develop mental illness and you don't know that they're going to, there's no way to predict that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kristen, your mic is still very, very quiet. I, I don't quite know why. Uh, well, if there's any way to boost I, your mic I, settings. Finally, like, do what it's supposed to do. <laughs> so I'll be quiet until it comes on. It's almost there. <laughs> okay. Um, it, I, I do want to quickly point out when Dawn says she has pictures of me, it wasn't that kind of picture. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> uh, only Arno has those pictures of me. <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> um, it, it's tough. Um, you know, there are times when we always expect the technology to police things itself and of course it doesn't and of course there's tough choices to make um and as, as you know if you've been following for any length of time I, I do realize the tough choices google has to make a lot of the time i think a lot of them it gets right a lot of them it thinks about a long time before it makes a decision um even the ones where there's not necessarily a right or a wrong mostly i i kind of like where they take things there are exceptions and my big worry of course is when you leave it to these companies to sort out for themselves what happens when a company changes hands um you know we don't get to elect who runs google we barely get to elect who actually runs a country um it, it's very very even that's questionable well, exactly that, because there are so many agencies that do not change hands with the president. Um, you know, his intelligence comes from agencies that are not open for public voting. Uh, when you look at a decision like who we go to war with, the people who give the intelligence that makes that decision were not elected and won't be elected. Um, our politicians, you know, the one we do go to vote, go on. Well, what I'm thinking is just look at when when Google introduced the whole autocomplete thing. If you if you really think about how that can where well, it could be manipulated for one, but but the other thing is it also um, gets people to think differently around certain subjects, um, which could potentially in the wrong hands be really really dangerous because loads of people are doing it and are typing it in. And well, when we get into the next phase of understanding or trying to understand what somebody is trying to do, 
uh, via voice search or any other way and and there then just one answer like like a rich snippet which is currently or a knowledge box or whatever a knowledge graph coming up um i mean that in the wrong hands could be so enormously powerful uh, in in changing people's minds or all these kind of things, which um, it, it worries me sometimes. It's 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 just like a potential. Um, it, it's a huge influencer, in my opinion. What do you guys think about that? Uh, I mean, if you listen to old uh, shows that I did with uh, Steve and Dave. Uh, the regulators, we talked about that a lot, how Google used to sh tell both sides of a story in the search. Now yeah. it only shows you the story you already know. Exactly. It doesn't really show two sides of a question. It gives you no, the exactly. answer it thinks you're looking for. It. Well, and the other... That's and the other, good. and the other thing, the other thing, Terry, which I noticed was like um, uh, about a year and a half ago, you could actually type in your whole problem, or just describe your whole problem from your mind, like within like ten keywords or something, and the result that would come up would be your solution. Nowadays, Google just kills one or two words and says, "This is what you're looking for." But actually, uh, Bill had a it, read Bill's last post. It actually yeah. kind of addresses that. Yeah. And there was another research paper he shared with us too, where they were actually looking at pulling results from another query to put them with a query to uh, make it a better uh, result. And that really blew my mind. Like. That would be, uh, that way, I just, it just dawned upon me, they could also tell both sides of a story that way, which that, in my opinion, would be a big improvement. Yeah. Yeah. And this is, again, where I worry is, as Google gets well, better, are we doing... going to get lazy and expect Google to give us all the answer? Because that's where it gets dangerous. The minute that mm -hmm. we trust yeah. When, yeah. that We're, all yeah. of the answer is there and don't mm -hmm. look, we don't look for the stuff that isn't there, mm -hmm. we are failing. That's not due diligence. Due diligence is not to fail, ask question and accept the answer you get. It's to keep digging until you cannot find any more, and then you know you found everything you can. No, but now you're talking about critical thinking, and that's almost a myth anymore. Yeah, we, that ship has sailed, Emma. We're not going to get lazy. We've been lazy for several years, yeah. and getting worse. Yeah, but has technology not done that in general, Doc? Made us that oh, yeah. Well, I mean, the thing is, what, what really bothers me is now, we have so much information at our fingertips compared to what we had 20, 30 years ago. And now people are so content, as Ammon is saying, to just ask a question, get an answer, and run with it. My work is done. Okay, now I've, I've made my honest effort, so I've got an answer, and I'm going to believe this, and I'm going to share it, and I'm going to swear it's true without putting any critical thinking skills in practice. And yeah, as, as I was saying, it's so easy to manipulate people that way. And we're just making it easier by being lazy. There are people, there are people who've written articles for places like the New York Times who've made the arguments that Google is making us stupider. And I think that those people are sort of self-incriminating themselves because uh, they're the ones letting themselves become stupider by not thinking things through. And you can't let that happen. You've got to ask the questions. They're sometimes tough questions, but I've been running to attorneys who uh, are really bad at that. They, uh, I get emails from them and I ask them what clown college they went to school at because they're not thinking. <laughs> I don't, I don't understand how anybody could say that Google is making us lazy and stupid because ultimately there's a, they're providing a wealth of information. 
we only have to put a bit of effort in and it, it's kind of all there in front of us I remember years ago when i was at college and we had to you know you had to go and root around in you know archive systems to find anything no it's just there at the at, you know at your fingertips but that that is a thing and I'll, I'll give you a personal example of this years ago people asked why i didn't blog um, because i've been active on the forums for years and i said well, you know why don't you blog why is it so difficult to keep up with all your stuff and i said because i want people to earn it if i just give you the answer you don't think about it if you have to interact with me and ask questions and you get to see the questions of others and more thinking involved it's better it's better for you and that makes it better for me i've, I've achieved my objective much better which was education i don't well it makes it too easy yeah go on, on. Uh, Eman, I completely agree. It's the same what I see happening in class with my kids nowadays. They change to a new schooling model where they basically were, are given a subject and then they, they have to figure out and answer questions by just investigating instead of just reading about it saying, this is the North Sea, it was this way, blah, 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 blah. They actually go and figure out like what animals live in it, when was it, well, when was it named and that kind of stuff. So I think, and I also think when when I had a problem, I used the entitled forum in quite a few times um, because then you can see the context of people asking this question and you could actually figure out which part was the thing you were looking for instead of just a blog post of an a certain solution. Yeah. And this directly ties back to that synopsis thing that, you know, there are people who think if they read the Reader's Digest version of something, they've read the story. And we know that's not at all true. Um, you know, a quick synopsis of the plot is not the same as seeing the movie or reading the book or, or experiencing the thing. It's a brief version. It's had all of the soul and all of the learning taken out to just a quick, you know, meta title um i think this is something that google is it's making easier and yes it's still people's own responsibility but unfortunately people are lazy and at some point you have to make that hard decision yeah it would have been great for me to blog yeah you know you know for well when i blog for others when i write stuff it usually gets a good few reads I could build up lots and lots of, of good link equity. My domain could be doing very, very nicely, thank you, and it would pay me lots of money to be on my site. Doesn't matter. The right decision was still the right decision because my objective was to educate and that didn't do the job. If Google's aim is to give us information and inform us, then they do have to think about format and they do have to think about is the way I am giving this information making people more hungry for information or more satisfied with quick answers? And sometimes you do have to make that choice. And I think that's a very tough one, but it's one that Google are going to have to take uh, under their wing. When I made the decision to start blogging 10 or so years ago, I said, okay, my first priority is going to be to write stuff that forces me to try to explain things in ways that other people can understand to help me learn better, not help them learn better. If I can put it in a way that they can understand, it is showing that I can simplify it enough to make it understandable by other people. And that was my goal. That was, I wanted to learn stuff, I wanted to, uh, share with other people but i wanted to put it be able to put it in a way that made sure that i understood it yeah um, jen did share a, a, a little twitter post that goes along with uh, what we were discussing i will quickly put that in the chat for everybody there we go but yeah it's very very difficult do 
does Google need to grapple with this on its own? We used to, for years, have you know boards of censors whose only job was to think about what the long-term effects of things were. I didn't always agree with their decisions, um, but I tell you, I miss the censorship of old. I watch something like um, oh, The Walking Dead. I have stopped watching The Walking Dead because at the start of this season, that was just gratuitous violence for the sake of gratuitous violence. They killed off every member of the cast in flashbacks as he imagined what could happen, just so that there was a gruesome scene for every single actor. I'm sorry, that's not good enough. The great thing of writing is that you can give all of that same punch, that same impact without having to show it. Great storytelling happens in the mind. It does not need to be shown in gory detail because you can always imagine worse than, than the thing is. But the, uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> did you see the real one when they showed what he did? That was slow. Well, I I did, this is it. That whole episode, not only did they kill off those two in that gruesome fashion, but then they had Rick imagining him doing it to all of the others as well. So even the two gruesome deaths, which were sickening for characters you'd grown to, to like, oh, right, if you knew the comics, you knew that they'd already actually survived past their time. But no, it was not right. It was not right at all. I will not watch that series again because it was just bad storytelling. And yeah, there should have been censorship. There's no way that was fit for public television without exceptional circumstances involved. It was that, that kind of reminds me, uh, yesterday, I was reading this morning, I was reading an article where, oh, Kristen, uh, where the assassination that happened yesterday, people were coming across that assassination video in their uh, autoplay video feeds. Like Twitter was autoplaying it. Um, I think Facebook was autoplaying it as well. So all of a sudden you have these people who don't want to watch someone be killed on a live video in real life. And as they're just scrolling through their feeds, all of a sudden these videos are playing, showing the, the assassination. Yeah, you know, I, I posted on Facebook, I, I think it was the New York Times, and the photo that they... Uh, had on their lead was the the guy standing there with his hand up in the air and, and the dead ambassador on the stage on next to him. On the floor, him. yeah. And, and, and a friend came to me this morning on Facebook and said, you know, I don't really want to see that kind of garbage in my feet, which, okay, I can understand. I wouldn't I kill the link because I'm sure he's not the only one that didn't really want to see that kind of thing. I dropped the link in. I didn't look to see what they were showing in the lead, and I had read it. Yeah, we get so acclimated to seeing that kind of stuff that we get numb and so it never registered on me but yeah you know there's there's gratuitous gratuitous sex gratuitous violence and vulgarity you know these are the things that sell unfortunately yeah um unfortunately the dollar has become very very mighty indeed um and I don't know. I'm just not one of those who thinks that you know the dollar is the ultimate value of everything. Just because it sells doesn't mean it should. Uh, huh? And I think that is why we have laws as a society, because there's a lot of things you could sell. Uh, there are people you could kill for money. You know, there's a reason that we make certain things illegal. Mm. And it's because we decide that society isn't served by those things. And, um, I was of the understanding that in the US, um, censorship was pretty high anyway uh, on things like you know nudity and in in TV and that kind of thing. Am I wrong there? It's one of those weird things, uh, Dawn, where they're much more likely to show you somebody being beaten to death than to show you them nude. As yep. long as they are ripped apart by dogs clothed it will probably be be shown whereas if they have loving sex oh that that will get people really worried about whether it's appropriate and if a pop star manages to pop a nipple out on stage that will get shock headlines yeah it's definitely much different than when you go to london and you see their newspaper with the nude people on it <laughs> that was always surprising and just like front and center there it is 
I think you're being generous calling that a newspaper, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid it kind of has, Aiden, but then again, I think ultimately we are people with a big sense of the light and we just want to see that continue. I think sometimes you've got to look at the dark questions and things before you can actually uh, take positive steps. And I think Christmas is usually a time of reflection. You know, as I said, uh, usually it's about what Google has done in the past 12 months. Uh, I think it's it's time to you know take a bit of stock sometimes on where we've gone as society in the past 10 years. John, you look like you were about to say something there. I don't know why, but you just... You're muted. Me? Me? <laughs> Sorry. I, I, I was about to say something. Yeah, maybe it was whoever just went past you there. Your son? Uh, uh, no, it's on. It's John, my husband. <laughs> we only see him from the back. We can't tell his age. Wandering past is so annoying. <laughs> <laughs> At least he's clothed. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's the worst, isn't it? At least he's keeping the dog entertained. She was trying to get on my knee. Yes. Yes, we, we did see Bert earlier. Haven't you stuck the little reindeer horns on her yet? She doesn't like no, she's got clothes actually. She's we've tried to put Christmas jumpers on her before, but she hates them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she doesn't like she hates clothes. You see, dogs often don't really like being dressed up. No. Yeah, you know, if, if you want a pet... Uh, Got loads of pictures of birds. Adopt Kristen. She'll let you dress up. <laughs> she doesn't care. Yeah, I've got loads of pictures of Bert naked on the internet. Oh. <laughs> I draw a line. <laughs> but Bert's a dog. I know, but if you're going to adopt me, you can't make me naked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's worse than that you'd, you'd be moving to manchester and i think that would be a culture shock for you after uh, arizona yeah well, <laughs> let's put it this way you would not be wearing much in the way of sundresses very often <laughs> anna, uh, anna, anna was here last week weren't you in manchester doc's heading off doc a very merry christmas to you sir and uh may your may your scotch glass not be empty until uh, well into the new year great holiday to everybody merry christmas i've got to run i got a commitment merry christmas staff uh -huh. yeah merry christmas. yeah we are kind of at the hour so let's do a <laughs> quick round up of uh what's in the week ahead obviously for most of us it's just christmas but uh, Arno, you're first over on my left, so what are you up to in the coming week? Um, finishing off work um, and then leaving for Sweden for two weeks. Nice. So we're gonna, we're gonna enjoy some snow over there in Ure. So it um, should be good. Last year was awesome. So, uh, so yeah, enjoying, and we'll be back on the 9th of January, so two weeks of, well, off time, which is good. <laughs> Need it. <laughs> yes, uh, it, it is one of these things, I think more and more of us working for ourselves, working for small agencies, we don't get holidays in the way that most people do. And, you know, even when we do, we kind of seem to still work through them. A number of people I've seen, you know, work, posting from laptops, uh, supposedly on vacation with their family. Admittedly, maybe it's because they're trying to get away from their family. Uh, not no. looking at here, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bill, what are you up to this week, sir? I came across a couple of papers on the Google Research site that I liked, and I wrote about one of them yesterday. It turned out good. And so I'm going to worry about the other one, which involves uh, understanding topics on pages and in content, looking at things like co-occurrence. And uh, uh, it's interesting how Google might handle that. So I figured I'd dive into it deeper and try to get a better sense of it and share it. 
other than that, I'm going to celebrate the holiday and uh, have a good time. I'm, I'm unfortunately not going to be with family this week uh, because I'm looking at moving, my sister's looking at moving, and, and uh, uh, we're, we're... You're going to compete for the first housewarming party. I mean, you know, which, which one of <laughs> the other round first to their new place? Right. So we're going to have to do some of that. It can, it can wait a little while, I think. Dawn, what's your week looking like? Well, I'm really getting behind on my dissertation, so I'm nearly a month behind now, so I'm going to try and catch up on that. Christmas, obviously, going to the Lake District for a few days as well, and trying to sort out my website that I decided to just migrate from .co.uk to .com at 10 o'clock in the night, and I was up till 6 in the morning <laughs> fixing it, so... Yeah, that was that was a bit of a flash decision. John's and doing such a good job of trying not to notice or, or pay any attention as he goes past. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It's not about this. He's going past with a cat letter tray now. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> it. Get away, Jen. What are you up to this week? Uh, the usual Christmas, holiday, family-related stuff. Also no pondering. No, unfortunately not. <laughs> I am pondering finally moving the SEM post over to HTTPS while well, it's kind of slow between Christmas and New Year's. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> yeah, well, there's been quite a few posts on that recently. Uh, <laughs> I think this um, woman on Twitter shared one the other day. Yeah, you can <laughs> Kristen, how about you? What's your week looking like? I have no idea. I've tried to put in a request to figure out plans with my kids. and It's all different this year. It's going to be the first year that I don't get to like wake up Christmas morning with them. Who knows? Might jump off a cliff by the end of the holidays. I don't know. <laughs> Probably not. Yeah. Just stick with it. The thing is, they are getting older, they're getting to be their own people, they're getting to make their own decisions. The power of other people to dictate is diminishing year by year, month by month. So just keep being you, your kids will want to know. And, uh, that's you yeah, say. you know what, it's really great um, with Instagram, which is the one social that my oldest daughter is allowed to have. We've been using that to message, and um, she's just a, a, uh, she lets me know when things are coming up, and so I've been able to go to like holiday things, um, like holiday concerts and stuff, and that's been a really big help. The older that she's getting, she's just turning into such a lovely human being. Does she dance? Yes. Mm -hmm. Ah, there you go. You must be so proud there. Yeah, all my kids, they, you know what, they were all in a dance concert on Saturday. It was really fun, like every single one, like boys and girls, all of them. And it was so cute to just see them like expressing their little bodies, like it, they did really well. Cool, excellent. Terry, how about you, sir? I'll be going to Hamilton on Sunday and probably Thursday I'm going to uh, – migrate from one uh, map, Google map uh, plug into another, which will actually hook up to my old data from my old program that I wrote. So uh, looking at how that'll work out. And if it works, then I'll be able to put it on to uh, another website where uh, it actually gives a geo location for a post. So the post comes up at the geo location. So I'm That's thinking cool. of, thinking of putting uh, members of a group on different places on this map. Cool. Cool. I like that. Uh, yeah, John of course sends his uh, happy holidays greeting to everybody. Happy holidays, you damn Americans. What's up with Merry <laughs> Christmas? Look, I know you are obsessed with political correctness and what happens if they don't celebrate Christmas? Well, they can celebrate the fact that you do and are having a good time. 
I don't celebrate <laughs> Ramadan. It's not going to stop me wishing somebody else a whatever, you know. Yeah, we still say happy Hanukkah to people. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. exactly. I, for me, it's Christmas, so it, it's a Merry Christmas. And it's going to be a happy new year. And, you know, I'm not going to ask whether you obey the Chinese New Year or the Occidental New Year. I'm just going to say happy new year. <laughs> and with that, we are out of time for this week. Taking us off. We'll see you next time along. We haven't discussed still uh, whether we're appearing next week. Uh, we'll probably chat about it sometime. If not, we will see you in the new year. Otherwise, see you in a week.